three colors across the sky. Can I climb this? Uh, Outlet Grim. Not loving it. I keep wondering if there's gonna be a reveal of like, there's a thing in the game that you could have been doing the whole time. Cause that's kind of the fun of the first game and some other games in the genre is that eventually you find something you're like, oh, wait, was this the whole time? And that's a neat reveal. Whereas this one feels so telegraphed that I do come away from, from each level feeling like I've done as much as I possibly can. And the question is whether or not that will be revealed in some cool moment to be wrong. Or if this one's a little more like almost handholdy in its approach to secrets like Doom 2016. Come on, people. Get on board. We haven't got all day. There's a certain style of game design that goes more and more towards the idea of having a bunch of collectibles or things that are bonus tasks that are slightly less, less obvious, but then just telegraphing and signposting them all to the point where they're not, uh, they're not secrets. This is, the word secret just doesn't really apply. So I'm curious. Yaku, take us in. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of you ever read an ancient writer called Ian Banks? I guess not. He postulated the concept of the outside context problem. That's when a society encounters something so advanced, so different, that they simply could not have conceived of it. That's what this is. This whole place is one giant outside context problem. And we're headed right into it. Is it? One of the theories that it could have been made by people that from New Alexandria. Sat down over there. Should I? Please do. I can't wait to get a closer look. Setting down. Okay, everyone. We need to explore as much as we can, separately if need be, but stay in touch. Record anything interesting you find, and pay special attention to any clues as to who built this place and why. The schematics we found in that lab were extremely incomplete, so if you can find any more of those, that would be great. I think someone should stay at the VTOL just in case. I volunteer you. See you later, Al. Gonna fall off and die. <laughs> no flashlights. It could just be an optical illusion caused by how the... It probably is. It was probably an illusion caused by the walls being diagonal. Maybe. But definitely felt like we when we set when we set down, I felt like we sat down on a diagonal surface. That really threw me for a second, but I think that's just because the walls are all diagonal, so any f those around start looking like normal walls, and the floor will then look diagonal by comparison. Slanted, I guess I should say. So I guess what I'm wondering is, will we find Prometheus in here? I don't think there's necessarily evidence that this is infinitely advanced compared to uh, what we had before. So I don't know if her quote fully makes sense to me. But she is written by the writers of the game, so even though they are argumentative and philosophizing a lot of the time, they could just say something that's correct, even if they didn't earn it sometimes. But this place is big, but big doesn't mean advanced. It's just a ton of stuff. But like, everyone that's alive today, as far as we're aware, is a robot, which can just work and work and work and go, and maybe even invent tools to work even better and faster and do the work for them and doesn't tire out, and they have literally had centuries or millennia in which to make this kind of stuff. Especially if they're from a separate simulation that didn't have an Elohim that held them in for longer, and they actually were... might have even had a head start. Which is one of the ideas I go by. This feels like a mistake. 
they're they're greened from the top down, but that's from weathering of the material, and we're indoors. I don't think there's rain and so on to do chemical weathering on these, so I don't think they sh I think they shouldn't be green, if I'm correct. They definitely shouldn't be green from the top down and then not green elsewhere, as if it specifically is weathering the top because there's nothing to land on them. There's even a roof right here, but I don't think it rains inside this pyramid regardless. But it's because they copy-paste that asset from elsewhere in the game where it is out outdoors. And so it just doesn't fully make sense. Look at this chaos. I feel like I've played this level in Destiny. Just absolute visual noise. It's so much. This is what this is what technology looks like in video games. It's always like nightmare shapes. This could be suggesting a sort of like blame or blam that one manga style thing where just like nano machines just kept building and building chaotically and disorganized in a disorganized way where they just had to keep going and going and so that's why there's just like a mess in here. For how much I reference Blam every now and then, I should actually get around to actually reading it. I heard about what it was like and and picked it up, and then it's been sat on my shelf. And every now and then, it's, people see it in the background of a video essay, and they're like, "Oh my God, it's Blam!" And I'm like, "Yep, definitely have read it. Definitely got around to that one. Definitely haven't accidentally put it off for years." Melville studying. Oh, their eyes stay open when they do that? Oh, that feels wrong. It feels intuitive that their eyes would close when they're doing that. Sort of the same statue from earlier. Two different shapes. This thing seems to be broken. Elevator doesn't open. It looks pretty distinctly not broken in appearance, at least. It looks pretty pristine. Which would suggest there's a way to open it that we haven't found yet. Triangle. Is this a lost puzzle? Hold on a second, 1K. I think I can find an override for that door. Maybe after that you can help me with this elevator? One problem at a time. What's going on with these file structures? Okay, door should be opening. Now. About the elevator. Actually, the elevator's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No idea where I am, but it's working. Don't go too far. Try to circle back. On it. <laughs> we're gonna get. We're, we're gonna lose somebody, aren't we? We're all gonna split up too hard. I feel like I should be a little worried out here. It's such a mega structure, faded, neon, fog, smog, nightmare that it gives you the uh, those Blade Runner vibes. One of these days I'll get around to the expansion of Cloudpunk. I didn't mean to take this long. I meant to I meant to just take a break and play something else and then come back to it. And I think it might have been over a year already. Whoops. Thinking of cyberpunk games. How are you already ahead of me? This keeps happening. Oh, that makes hey, sense. Okay, can we talk for a second? Potentially. That whole thing with the elevator just gave me the creeps. So you took the elevator, but now you're somehow past me. The fact that he took transportation is now ahead of me isn't that weird, but an elevator should go up and down, and I don't think I went up and down very much, so... That's just strange that he's ahead of me. I'm ready for weird reveals, so I'm like, is this a copy of him that was made by the building? Like, is something, anything weird like that happening, or is it just an odd thing where he's ahead of me? Sure. What's up? When we first arrived here, I was really excited. It's such a huge place. The technology is so advanced. What technology? If we figure out what it all means, we could really change the future of New Jerusalem. The mayor says we have to avoid repeating the mistakes our ancestors made 
to stay humble, to not reach too far. And that sounds very abstract, but I've seen the ancient cities. I've seen how much they built, how much they grew, how far they fell. So I've been thinking, what if all this sets us on the same path? What if this is too much power for anyone to control? I really feel like it's getting ahead of itself. Because, uh, what technology? <laughs> There's an elevator and a door. Big laser beam open door. It's a signal to open a door. Okay. The, uh, the more interesting weird technology. I, I guess there has been advanced technology in the past, like the weird, ma the, the micro machine things, nano machines, not micro machines. Uh, but I'm just, the fact that we're showing up here and it's just a big blobby weird series of hallways with some doors and elevators, it feels like him being in awe of the technology now is a little weird. But I guess the scale of it will just do that to people. The mayor's premise is wrong. He's assuming history can only develop in one way. So you mean we can do what our ancestors did, but it'll turn out differently this time? Yes. We're not in the same historical situation as they were. That's a good point. Just because there are some parallels doesn't mean we have to repeat the past. The specifics matter. I guess I get too pessimistic sometimes. Maybe I've spent too much time looking at ruins. There's so much we could learn here. I should focus on that. Thanks for talking to me, 1K. I know we're in the middle of something, but I kind of needed that. I tried to ignore the way that he phrased it, almost like a trap, where he's like, Oh yeah? So if we do all the same things our ancestors did, we, maybe something different will happen? I'm like, okay, man, that's not what I said. But I powered through that. Because, uh... We aren't human. We might somewhat think like them, but we don't have the same needs and requirements, or maybe, and maybe not even the same greed as they do. We, not, we might not experience pleasure or have the same sense of we might have the same sense of pleasure or the same sense of like ownership and so on but here's the stuff that we saw as indicative of the gravity thing before like we don't need food we need power to survive but in a very very different way So there's a lot of infrastructure and systems that don't necessarily need to happen. I don't think that... It looks like another set of puzzles. Same pattern, one gate, three receivers. Like some sort of fractal symmetry. I think that robots have the power to expand in, in a planned way. I don't think that just the idea that they can expand and create more and so on necessarily means that they need to reinvent capitalism. Planned obsolescence. The concept of... pointlessly creating more for the sake of making money and not because the things are needed and so on. Where am I getting these... where are these pieces coming from? Activate three beams, zero out of three. <coughs> these things not being lit up makes me feel a little weird, because I thought you had to, like, earn these pieces as you went or something? And now I'm slightly more unclear on what happened. 
We're trying to turn on three lasers. I'll try not to solve too many tetromino chunks, because whatever I leave unsolved is indicative of where I haven't been. This area is huge. That was definitely a level down there. Yeah, those are levels. That's more to trauma. Okay, let's let's go over there and do that thing first. Try not to get too disoriented here. This place is real big. Well, it up in one thing. <laughs> Straightforward enough. And it seems like it's one of the beams. Who's a good boy? Yeah, this entire area is starting to come across as just like comically wasteful. Like we knew this place was big, but what we didn't know is that it's empty. <laughs> like it's so empty, there's so much empty space. And so much area that's just more and more traversal space. Maybe we could try to come to the conclusion that these things collectively have some kind of purpose, but that might be a leap. I wonder how far down this goes. Let's not test that. There's a blue one there. A red on here. This requires red. It's receiving blue. Okay, it's one of these. So it's receiving blue and outputting two reds. The inverter. <laughs> That's the lever I need, so I need to put blue here to win. That's a bit of a taunt, isn't it? <laughs> the source and receiver are in the same room right next to each other. That's, I, I, it's, it, so it, it, come, it comes across as being comically easy. But I assume that the moment I move one of these things... Because that's on top of a box. So if this stops being lit up, this probably becomes a barrier and that cuts it off. And these only being blue beams, I can't bounce that over there because this will make a red beam. This one's a connector instead of a sp uh, an inverter, but I also can't move it. So I don't... Okay, so I don't currently need this blue source because it also has a second blue source coming from over there.
just to simplify that a little bit. Yeah, it's not going to give me an angle that lets me connect with this. Okay. Starts off blue and needs to end blue. Feeding into there. Now I think we want to cut this off. That should then give you the ability to put out blue. Okay, that one was relatively straightforward. It just took a bit to parse what I was looking at. There was a lot. And that's two down. There's part of me that almost wants like a fake out or a subversion. Just because of how sincerely we're doing the whole, this place is so huge and grand and that means it's epic and technological and incomprehensible and it's like it's just what if it's just broken or it's a lie in some way madness even the walls are bursting with power because on, on some level even everyone involved in this is like this isn't this whole place doesn't make sense right something doesn't make sense about this what is going on here And who let these choir singers in? This requires green. Looks like a door, but I'm not sure. Uh, they're kind of around. Um? Okay, this is part of the puzzle. I was wondering. Let's see, the one that's closer needs to be... There we go. Now they can both coexist. So this can be mixed with blue to make green, and this one just is red. And you can see these things from here. Just need to actually connect them. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -da -da -da.
Uh, this will probably connect. There we go. Gotta be careful. Got it. Hmm. That should just wrap back around. So much of this stuff kind of reads a secret pass. I still keep wondering if I'm just bad at finding the secrets. Time to solve every bridge for no reason. Because there was kind of a non-linear path through all this, but it feels weird to leave any of the bridges incomplete. <laughs> if I spot them. I hate getting locked out of parts of the system. I think I've tracked down some more schematics, though. Let's see. This might do something. Or not. Green? Do they all have a light strip? I guess so, maybe. Yeah, a lot of these are so straightforward that you just click, click, click. And you might have to rotate once. But I'll take it over the return of the trauma notes from before. Um. Well, what's gonna happen in here? Listen, man, I live in California. I'm used to textured walls, but this is ridiculous. This is just so much. Speaking as one textured wall haver to another, reel it in, buddy. It's not a contest to reach maximum surface area. Question. From Miranda, I have a question. I was doing some reading while the last trial was running and I came across something I don't understand. There are a lot of references to ancient humans feeling that science is boring. To me, everything we're studying is mind-bendingly incredible. Whether it's quark gluon deconfinement or neutrino anti-neutrino oscillations, or even something incredibly basic like the properties of light. I understand why our ancestors cared about art, why a beautifully crafted story or poem was moving to them, but how could they not see that everything that surrounds them is just as incredible? Studying a science is like studying the most incredible machine ever created, a machine designed to build worlds and tell stories. How could they not see that? I'm sure there's a good explanation, but I just don't get it. Miranda. One answer is that things that are too complicated without having a corresponding level of emotional engagement are just difficult for people to engage with. But the other answer is they did. Because they wrote you. You're a fictional character they wrote making an argument. Mother, I'm back. What are you thinking about, Mother? 
the Talus Principle. You see, it has two applications. One is to the self. It means facing the truth, even if it frightens us. Understanding that living beings are machines and we can't afford to lie to ourselves. But that's just the beginning. The second application is to the world. This one seems easier at first. It's less difficult to understand that the universe is a machine governed by laws. So we and the universe are the same? No, and that's the crucial part. We are conscious. Consciousness is rare, unlikely, but it's also the foundation of everything else. Without us, there can be no meaning. Without someone to perceive it, the beauty of the universe is pointless. But that shouldn't make us arrogant. No, in fact, it means we carry a tremendous responsibility. We are the light of the cosmos. And if we go out, there will be nothing but a cold, dark machine. Act 2, The Human Form Divine Ooh. Athena! The Founder was here? She could still be here. What if this... This is why she left, to build all this? We have to look for her. I'm reading some pretty big energy spikes. I think we better scramble. But she could be right here, right behind the next door. I could turn around a corner and walk right into her. If she's really here, she'll still be here when we come back. But right now, safety needs to come first. Let's go, Byron. You... Oh. Damn you, but you're right. Heading back. And run all the way back. He's so fixated on Athena that I almost wonder if there's a, an element of guilt. Like he's trying to make up for something with her. Or feels like he might have done something that caused her to leave. Or put her in danger. Was that really the founder? I think so. It was her. For years I've wondered what happened to her, why she left, where she went, why she didn't... why she didn't tell me. If the answers are here, I promise you we'll find them. We just have to be careful. Follow protocol. I still can't believe the Founder built this place. Has she been here the whole time? We don't know that she actually built it. All we know for sure is that she was here at some point. Of course she built this. Who else would have the kind of vision necessary to accomplish something like this? The question is why, and why like this? Why recreate all these aspects of the simulation? What is she trying to tell us? It does seem like it might be a test. I can't imagine any other explanation. But why is it so broken? Or does it just appear to be broken so that we have to learn how to fix it? I hate this. Well, I know one thing for sure. Everyone in New Jerusalem is gonna go absolutely nuts. Whoa, hello. Probably dangerous to hop in there. A few things. One, how do we know she was here? There's a recording of her here. But the recording isn't of here. It's of Elohim's weird glitch matrix space. So it's hard to confirm as being here. Rust. Ulysses, excerpt F5358 again. How dull it is to pause. To make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use, as though to breathe were life, life piled on life, where were all too little, and on one to me 
little remains, but every hour is saved from the eternal silence, something more, a bringer of new things, and vile it were for some these three sons to store and hoard myself, and this grey spirit yearning is desire, to follow knowledge like a sinking star, beyond the utmost bound of human thought. That's the poem she was bogarting when I walked by the first time. I went that way. I know they want me to leave, but there's like other directions to poke around. The Sphinx. Chernyshevsky. On loyalty. From Arkady Chernyshevsky. Chernyshevsky in our likeness essays on humankind reaching adulthood what I propose then is that we are not born as entirely free agents responsible only for ourselves the very core of what we are our sentience separates us from and elevates us above the animal kingdom as I have argued this is not a matter of arrogance but of responsibility However, this blessing also demands something else from us, something more personal than responsibility, and that is loyalty. Our ancestors, less atomized than we are, experienced a crude version of this loyalty, swearing al allegiance to tribes, races, nations, and other such semi-fictional semi concepts. This fragmented understanding was easily exploited and led to many conflicts, we can, we can condemn them for that, or we can choose to believe these were necessary historical steps towards our growth. But above all, we must stop indulging in such childlike behavior. Our species can no longer afford to believe in Mother Russia or Uncle Sam. Neither, however, can we afford to indulge in the adolescent rebel's misanthropy. misanthropy rejecting the many gifts we have been lucky enough to receive. Not from above, but from the history of our species. To put it simply, each of us owes a burden of loyalty to humanity itself, to the human project across time and space. This is not a minor matter, or some abstract issue for philosophers. It is a profound and significant part of everyday life. It is a universal source of meaning and insight that can bind us together and set us on a path for a brighter future. And it is also a division, a line that must be that must held against those who preach the gospel of self-annihilation. We ignore it at our peril. Beneshevsky, like Drennan, stood by this belief to the bitter end. Without him, the archive would not exist. We owe humanity our loyalty. So we owe a more personal debt to those individuals who gave everything for our story to continue. Kind of making my case a little bit there. There's a recording of somebody who was never here. There's the Sphinx. There's Prometheus. And there's Pandora. Sweet box, bro. One way or another, it is noteworthy that as AI constructs in their effort to recreate humanity, they do indeed have a particular fixation on... Uh... Ornamentation. Ritual. Aesthetic. Even if it's a different aesthetic. I wonder if it's gonna come up that he went through that tube. Like, what if he's copied and replaced or something? Scanned. It just feels like a thing you don't just set up and then throw away. The idea that he went into an elevator, but nothing came of him going to the elevator, really. Like, that seems like something... Sinister might happen.
All right, take us back to base camp, Yakut. Yes, sir. There's such a funny I'm series of readings. paradoxes. Looks like two of the northern sites are lighting up. I think that may have been me. I suspect the puzzles are somehow tied to the transport system, like we're supposed to solve them in a particular order. Bouncy lasers. Wow, those are far away. We're covering an, a huge amount of ground to do these areas. Like, the transport system takes us really far. objective is getting back into the megastructure. 1K, I want you on puzzles. You seem to have a knack for them. But the rest of us can't neglect our secondary objectives of studying this island and understanding this technology. When I was talking about the sort of paradoxical levels of this. I was ta thinking about the fact that video games are very, very frequently about an artificial construct trying to simulate or create a facsimile that is believable of some kind of form of life. And these characters are all robot android people who are them a facsimile of life. And, and so you have this... You have a thing that's made by humans that is artificial, that's meant to simulate living creatures, but those living creatures are themselves artificial in the text, simulating living creatures. Like the layers that happen there. They're a lot. It's a whopper. There's a whole extra button there. Yep. Ugh, fall damage. I have a choice. And they are once again the same. Eight, three, one. All right, and you specifically can't just keep going clockwise or whatever. All right. Well, on some level it's satisfying to go from side to side, so I'll go here. Oh, uh, it's also give. It's also called North One, so it's just intuitive. Desolate Island, North One, a remote rocky island off the northwestern coast. Survey data suggests the area may be prone to landslides. You should be headed towards an island off the northern coast. The terrain's pretty rough, so be careful. The island has another island attached to it. Yes, it has several, actually. How irritating. What? Going to the snow level. There's always something slightly upsetting about the ring of metal that we plunge through over and over again. As it threatens to just, it feels like it's about to collide every time. Well, we don't normally go straight to the elevator. Um. 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 Interesting. I'm okay. I'm interested. Um. There's me's. Okay, we have a format change. This time, all the puzzles are just right next to each other, and they even look very small. Maybe not that small. I thought that, that I thought that and that were puzzles, but it's that's, 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 that's a fake parking space. There's three just packed in here. That's interesting. It'd be it'd be cool to see them make each uh, world feel different, both both not just in, like the theming of like this is the lava level, but also like structure. Okay, it looks like after the first three, they're pretty spaced out actually. So we're kind of back to that. It's a little startling to see them all packed together like this at the beginning, but I guess that was also kind of like that in the first level. The first few puzzles were all right next to each other. 
Uh. Mind body dualism. Hello. Oh. So if you have line of sight, you can switch bodies, just like that. Okay. That's not helpful. Oh, ladder. I mean, the ladder's being kind of a fail state for when you get stuck, as opposed to this. Just a tad bit of line of sight awkwardness. Well, here's a brief worry. Am I leaving as the same robot or, or a different one? Am I ending this chapter with the same body that I started with? Not likely. It's a bit of a crisis existentially. Curious. What does the platform do? Intuitively, you think you would think it might work like the boxes, but for just for standing on. What does it do? What am I missing here? It doesn't float. What do you want from me? I'm not sure, I'm just kind of unclear on the mechanics here. So my goal is to go there and stand there. So they might just want me to have the platform so I can put it down on that to make that one, that part work.
Oh. It's the Lost Vikings. It's the Lost Vikings, got it. The guy with the shield you could stand on. You hold the platform, you don't use it. I was just trying to like, implement it, Any like add it, it somewhere. To be honest with you, Byron, I feel like a caveman trying to study Bose-Einstein condensate. I'm seeing unknown particles whose every property violates the laws of physics, apparently capable of being controlled and recombined into just about anything. It's ridiculous. Maybe someone in New Jerusalem can figure it out. Sure, just give them another thousand years. There we go. So can I just walk around until it all lines up? Interesting. So only one of these works at a time because of how the line of sight works. The particle clouds continue to be exactly the same. But it's also not that hard to get past. Oh, hi. Wonkai. I've been watching you solve these puzzles and this body replication tech is incredible. It just casually blows up the very foundations of our society. Yeah, and given what I just said about what might have happened to Yakit, I'm a little worried. What do you mean? Do you have any idea how hard it is to make more of us? We're not like a toaster. You don't just weld together a couple of wires and a motherboard and call it a day. Not to mention how hard it is to even find some of the materials. And this thing just... Poof! New human! But the goal was to stop at 1,000, wasn't it? It was. Or was it? And even if it was, sorry to be heretical, but does it matter? If we can figure out how this works, we can finally, easily create more people. We can grow. We can expand. We can build a real civilization. Isn't that worth pursuing? Maybe there is some point where there's enough people, but this is not it. Look, yes. Large amounts of people can cause problems, but even the problems they cause are interesting. Because without people, the world is boring. I'm not even saying there isn't some planetary limit, but I've done the maths. It's in the high billions, not a measly thousand. Anyway, we all need to think about what this means. Glad you and I are more or less on the same page. All right, I'll get back to work. I'm just fairly sure that there's more than 1,000 types of people on Earth. Let alone the basic logistical issues of them being this like, yeah, we're out of engineers. technology is proof of just how vital this expedition is. We may not know how it works and what its limitations are, but the technology itself isn't even what really matters. What matters is to expand our imagination to realize that other futures are possible. I'm glad you see it that way too, 1K. 
After all, the world is better with you in it, isn't it? Some of this feels a bit like bait. <laughs> yeah, the moment they're like, uh, we need more engineers. This, this, this one guy is like our one good engineer. And then they also say, yeah, we just lose people sometimes. I'm like, ah! I'm sorry, is there one supporting, is there one character that's like a, the load-bearing support of your entire society? Because yeah, I probably need to make more people. Miranda is the founder's daughter. It's still kind of blowing my mind. She came all the way out here, left everything she had behind, and created a new life. Why do you think she did that? Perhaps she was lonely. Could be. I know I've sometimes felt... I've felt really lonely. Even when I was surrounded by people. Like there's something inside of me that just... can't connect. Like there's this deep sadness about... about the world. About history. About everything. And... I don't know how to get over it. Sorry. Probably oversharing. Look what you did. You gave him anxiety. Don't be sorry. I'm here for you if you ever want to talk. Thanks, 1K. I appreciate it. I want to ask you about something else. How are you feeling? I'm not sure, to be honest. This is all so surreal. Walking around here is so peaceful, but it's also, I don't know. One moment I feel inspired, the next kind of creeped out. Why is the northern part of the island mostly underwater? Our ancestors relied heavily on fossil fuels for energy generation, which released a lot of carbon dioxide. This caused the atmosphere to trap more heat, which changed the planet's overall climate. The effect continued even after they were gone, and these low-lying areas were flooded. I've seen a lot of places like that. Did you ever meet the founder? No, I never did. I would have loved to. Have you changed your mind about trying some puzzles? Nope. <laughs> Whole answer. What did you make of the megastructure's interior? You know, people throw around the word awesome a lot. I probably do it too, but I think what we saw in there is the proper meaning of the word. Because it inspires awe. You gave the robot sadness. Congratulations. You've, cre you've recreated humanity, but at what cost? I did want to double check. There's nothing down here, right? There are signs pointing where things may be. And there's the bridge, but it's the destination. A Tetromino made of Tetrominos. I can appreciate that the shape itself is cons it made entirely of Tetrominos and they do, they're all complete. So it doesn't cheat as far as I can tell. What a nightmare. 